Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication. It's Friday, January 13th, and it's time for your first Fusion News update of 2023. Stories today include, one, the 2022 Good Tech Awards, two, World Survey of Fusion Devices 2022, three, Current distribution monitoring enables quench and damage detection in superconducting fusion magnets. Four, International Nuclear Fusion Project may be delayed by years, its head admits. Five, the universe is more in our hands than ever before. I also have some bonus news for you at the end, so stick around. One, the 2022 Good Tech Awards. The New York Times featured fusion in the 2022 Good Tech Awards, specifically citing the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, and Fusion Industry Association members Helion Energy and Commonwealth Fusion Systems, or CFS. The award for Keeping the Fusion Dream Alive honored the results at NIF along with the current excitement around fusion startups, including Helion and CFS, who plan to have working prototypes by 2024 and 2025, respectively. In addition to the Good Tech Award, the Times also published an opinion piece on the reality of the fusion technology arriving in time to fight climate change. Spoilers, it will. 2. World Survey of Fusion Devices 2022 This publication from the International Atomic Energy Agency is a fusion nerd's dream come true. The report contains a list of fusion devices that are currently operating, under construction, or planned around the world, organized by device type and location. It additionally provides statistics around publications, funding, and other parameters that help to create a comprehensive picture of the status of the world's fusion efforts. This is an excellent resource for fusion professionals and enthusiasts alike to keep informed on the details of the over 130 fusion devices that are included in this paper. 3. Current distribution monitoring enables quench and damage detection in superconducting fusion magnets. An article was published in Nature Scientific Reports at the end of December about quench detection in high temperature superconductors, or HTS. HTS is a cornerstone in the design of several magnetic confinement concepts including those of CFS and tokamak energy, as its increased range of operability and current density have allowed for the design of much more compact and powerful devices. In any superconducting magnet, quench detection is a requirement for the safety of the magnet. If a large enough local change in temperature occurs in any section of the superconductor, a region of so-called normal conduction is created which means much more heat is generated as massive amounts of current pass through a conductive region. It is vital to immediately protect the magnet during a quench in order to prevent massive damage. HTS materials have higher thermal stability, which gives it larger temperature margins, but makes it much harder to rapidly detect quench. To add to this, the high magnetic field environment creates even more complications. This paper introduces a technique that involves inductively measuring the current in HTS, allowing rapid real-time monitoring of the current in superconducting cables. During a quench, fluctuations in the current could alert operators that a problem exists and instigate an automatic response. While the authors of this paper believe their technique may only supplement conventional detection technologies, these kinds of studies are vital to making fusion and engineering reality. I also want to give a shout out to former Fusion News presenter, Dr. Erica Salazar, whose thesis work was cited in this paper. I've linked her article in the description along with the Nature paper. Four, International Nuclear Fusion Project may be delayed by years, its head admits. In disappointing news from ITER, the international project has announced they expect delays to their intended schedule, according to Dr. Pietro Berabashi, the recently appointed head of the project to build the largest tokamak in the world in the south of France. He stated that incorrectly sized components of the vacuum chamber and corrosion in the thermal shield, in addition to an overly ambitious original plan, would prevent the project from achieving first plasma in 2025. Barabashi hopes that the delays may still be recovered in time to produce deuterium tritium plasmas in 2035. Five, the universe is more in our hands than ever before. This article by Professor Adam Frank explains how experiments at NIF have contributed to the field of astrophysics. Fusion is often described as creating a sun on earth, but astrophysicists realize the real potential for the actual study of stars, supernova, and planets using NIF. This led to the creation of a field called High Energy Density Laboratory Astrophysics, or HEDLA. Frank and his colleagues were able to perform experiments at NIF to find the pressure limit for iron to remain liquid at the core of a planet, which is the key for Earth to maintain the magnetic field that makes life possible. Their results show that planets significantly larger than Earth could maintain a magnetic field for long enough to sustain life. 
While this story doesn't directly involve fusion, I find the application of fusion technology to other fields exciting. And I am really glad that the success at NIF is able to shine a spotlight on other exciting research. Finally, let's check out the bonus fusion news this week. First, an XKCD comic. The webcomic XKCD, a favorite of mine, alluded to the results at NIF in December with a tongue-in-cheek commentary on the meaning of fusion gain, or Q. Next, there is a fun exploration of fusion in popular media. This article is a series on real science that looks at how science is portrayed in film and TV, and they recently tackled how fusion is discussed in the 2013 movie Oblivion. I found the article entertaining, and I'm probably going to let my brain rest after recording this week's news by watching Tom Cruise explain fusion to me. I also found some YouTube videos. Some fusion companies, including Fusion Industry Association members, were featured on YouTube recently, including a continuation of the video collaboration between Helion and YouTuber Cleo Abrams. Links to those videos are in the description. And finally, more news on NIF. In the last edition of Fusion News, Sid did an excellent job covering the results out of NIF at the end of last year. Even more articles, including a lot of opinion pieces, have been published, so I included links to those articles in the description. Some of them discuss the NIF results specifically, and some are more generally exploring the potential of fusion, but all the reads are interesting and worth a look. That's all for Fusion News this week. Stay tuned for our next update. Please like and subscribe for more Fusion News, and check out the links in the description if you want more information.